Hello everyone, this is Nasak Purohe. Today we are going to discuss about the magnitude resistive random access memory. We are going to have introduction of MRAM technology, main concept behind the MRAM, advancement towards the MRAM technology, structure of MRAM, types of MRAM, and reliability issues that we face in development of MRAM. Let's first understand what is an MRAM. MRAM is a class of a solid state device circuits that stores data as a stable magnetic state and reads data by measuring the resistance of the device to determine the magnetic state. Uh, the MRAM was designed with an idea that it will replace and be a universal memory, hence uh, replicating the property of a dynamic RAM, which is having a higher, higher density, and the speed of static RAM. MRAM works on the concept of magnetic channel junction device, and it has two commercially available variants, one being the toggle MRAM, which is an older version and more stable one, and other being the STT MRAM, which is in an earlier state of stage of commercialization. Now let's take a look at magnetic channel junction devices. Let's consider two ferromagnetic materials, which are divided by a dielectric. When the tunnel barrier between two materials is lower than two nanometer, a phenomena known as quantum mechanical tunneling for electrons will take place, making this whole device behave like a resistor. This is due to the spin polarized current, which is due to the, uh, which flows due to the asymmetric, uh, asymmetric band structure of these two uh, ferromagnetic materials. With uh, this phenomena will result into the rise of tunnel magnet resistance. The orientation of the magnetic field also plays a very crucial role, as if the orientation is in the parallel state, as shown in the figure, the, there will be a good band matching, high current, and low resistance, while if there is an anti-parallel state, which is a uh, which is a orientation in two different directions, we will have a poor band matching, low current, and high resistance. Let's talk about certain advancements towards the AMRAM technology. The first and foremost advancement which gave a boost to the development of AMRAM was tunnel magnetic resistance. So the development of a of a material which has a higher magnetic resistance ratio at a room temperature gave an idea of development of MRAM, which was more compatible with existing storage device by matching the resistance. As we all know, that the most of electronics, around 80% of them, works on the normal room temperature. This breakthrough was very exciting and started a race among, among the developers to design a more commercializable MRAM. But there were certain issues with this, which were addressed by Switchenko switching. First and foremost issue was that ability to select the storage device from a huge array of storage devices. So Switchenko switching actually uh, addressed this uh, problem up to a certain extent. To understand Switchenko switching, we must understand the idea of toggle MRAM. The toggle MRAM, uh, as the name is the technique of switching between the one state to another by using just one write pulse sequence. So we use the same write pulse sequence through the switching instead of having a multiple one for the multiple uh, multiple stages. Then came the spin torque switching, which was first uh, theorized by J.S. Lewinsky and L. Berger in 1996. Uh, it was, as we remember in the previous slides, that uh, two ferromagnetic materials are being separated by a non-magnetic spacer or dielectric. So it also exerted torque of magnetization on each layer, as the uh, this torque results uh, this torque results in the local magnetization, which will be uh, discussed in further slides. And if the current is high enough between this uh, materials, it this can result in the switching of a free layer. It was demonstrated by Catherine et al. in 2000. Now let's take a look at the structure of MRAM. As you can see, this is the same configuration that we saw in our previous slides. Uh, two ferromagnetic materials separated by a dielectric. As now you can see, the same. Uh, this will also follow the same rules of parallel and anti-parallel beha anti uh, behavior of ferromagnetic material. If there's an anti-parallel behavior, we can see the signal strength, uh, cell signal strength is lower and uh, it is uh, the output of the output cell signal will be uh, degraded, while it will give a very good output signal when they are in the parallel state. So we must understand that there's the two different thickness will result in a two different switching fields due to the shape and entropy of the deep submicron level. Yeah, the deep submicron level will play a very crucial role in the uh, in the cell strength. This is the structure of a uh, of a uh, MRAM. Uh, you, you can see there are transistors, world line, beat line, and this is the same 
uh, a magnetic tunnel junction device that we saw in our previous slides. Uh, they have a different orientation as you can see. Now let's talk about the toggle embryo. First we must consider the, uh, understand the operation of toggle embryo. The, as we remember the advantage of uh, switching or switching uh, was that it has a low right error rate and reduced sensitivity to external field. So for any SF uh, layer which are in anti-parallel, as we can see these, these layers are anti-parallel. This one is just one ferromagnetic, ferromagnetic material which will be parallel to the magnetic field while this two ferromagnetic material will have an anti-parallel behavior. As we exert the external field, this will form a scissor shape alignment. Eventually, this alignment will change itself into a parallel form at a field saturation, so field saturation, which is a point at which the saturation will come and we will eventually see the alignment being a parallel, which is usually denoted by H set. Now, the to toggle from 0 to 1 is done using a current I1 and I2 in such a way that the sum of the vector is effectively rotated in 90 degrees. 90 degrees. Now let's talk about the application of Togol MRAM. MRAM is generally used for data storage, networking, industrial automation. Togol MRAM is also used for memory and battery or capacitors. But the only problem with MRAM is, the, it, is that it has a low density. Hence, it cannot replicate the behavior of a dynamic RAM, which is a foremost requirement for any MRAM in development. Now let's talk about the newer version of MRAM, which is STT MRAM. Now let's consider the same configuration that we have seen before, the two ferromagnetic material divided by a, uh, or divided by a dielectric. Now as the flow of current will take place, this will create a spin of conduction and will result into the local magnetization. Now due to the conservation of momentum, the difference between the momentum of incoming current and outgoing current will yield into a torque being generated and this torque is usually known as spin transfer torque which is an acting principle for STT MRAM. Now let's see that uh, now let's see the structure uh, of STT MRAM. The first one is a conventional MRAM cell as you can see it has certain cladding bypass line it's a very complicated structure and every complicated structure has, has its own problem. Uh, the problem with, with this structure is that it reduces the writing and reading margins and reduces the speed of operation. While in STT RAM, this problem is solved by removing the uh, cladding bypass line landing pad and creating a more simplified version of the MRAM cell, helping to counter us with the design flaws that we saw in the conventional MRAM. Now let's talk about the emergence of thermal assisted MRAM. The retention of mem here the, we must understand the concept of the barrier height. The barrier height of barrier is directly proportional to the retain, retention of memory. That is the higher the barrier height, the more information is retained. However, there is a problem with this. As the barrier height increases, it becomes difficult to switch from one state to another. So we now we consider for the right state of the memory. So if we are in the reading state when barrier is high, now we want to switch into the right state. So we here we use the concept of thermal assisted write. Here we store the information at a standby temperature at which barrier height is high. So we are retaining the information and then we temporarily increase the temperature of the storage element during each write event to reduce the barrier height. So we keep on increasing, increasing the temperature, reducing the barrier height and this will help us to ease in switching between the two memory states from read to write and write to read. After the switching is done, the memory element is cooled down and the barrier height is recovered. Hence, it will uh, retain its memory as promised. Uh, as promised for uh, MRAM. Now let's talk about certain implication and concerns of MRAM. The first and foremost being tunnel barrier dielectric. So as we know that the tunnel barrier plays a very crucial role which is usually because of a dielectric which, which maintains the certain distance which help us for the magnetization uh, which helping the local magnetization of the device. But that's also a problem. Tunnel barrier which is subjected to voltage during read cycle, the side voltage will depend on the technology factors. And then the read, so there will be a difference in the voltage for the read and write. And this can create a problem, uh, a problem as we are using a very different kind of materials dielectric. So different materials have a different property. It creates a problem of uh, 
different materials behaving at different temperatures. The second implication is back end of line dielectric. Now, as you as you can see in here, that MJTs are technically a sensitive uh, thermal sensitive devices. So, if you are having a very short exposure on an MJT of higher temperature, it will if, have a permanent degradation of MJTs. As you know, the MJT is the heart of this whole operations. So, because of that, uh, we will see some we will see an anomaly known an anomaly which is due, which is due to the higher temperature. And there will be two different temperature layers. As you can see, one will be the lower temperature or normal BOEL dielectric, another will be the higher temperature which will affect the functioning of MJT. This is the implication of back end of line dielectric. Now, well, basically, this means that the lower temperature process must be developed uh, to uh, develop uh, for the BOEL dielectrics of MRAM. Now let's talk about the third implication of MRAM, which is being stacked stacked elimination. So as we know, MRAM consists of multiple layers, and multiple layers have some multiple thermal expansion coefficient. So multiple layers behave different depending on the uh, coefficient of expansion in presence of higher temperature. Now this creates a problem for MRAM. As the temperature keeps on varying during the read and write cycle, we can have a serious alteration of MRAM structure or MRAM device uh, during the change in temperature. Now the fourth one is electro migration. So first, to, first and foremost, the it, uh, MRAM requires a very high magnetic field to be applied, and to apply this high magnetic field, we require the high current pulses. As you understand that if there is a high current pulse, the same high current pulse can also uh, produce a problem of electro migration and can deform the cell due to the use of different kind of materials in development of MRAM. The last one is the soft error rate. Now we understood from this that uh, MRAM is a thermally activated device. We need to activate to activate from read to write and write to read uh, cycles. We need to increase the uh, activity thermal activity. We need to increase the temperature. We need to decrease the temperature. And if we consider at the higher temperature, there is a chance that certain switching will take place without the requirement. So it will be an unrequested switching which was not required in the uh, which was not required. But it can take place, take place, hence uh, having a very dangerous implication on the read or write uh, operation of an MRAM. Thus, we can conclude from this presentation is that MRAM is the one of the most prominent and promising technology in uh, in, in storage devices. But there are challenge of, uh, challenges of device characterization that uh, MRAM is MRAM faces. But this will also help us to push the boundaries of innovation. When in a need of low voltage and high storage density uh, devices makes MRAM more pro pro prominent and exciting technology, which will be a, certainly which will be a part of the next technological revolution. You can go through the references given below uh, to get a more deep insight in the MRAM technology and stuff. Thank you and have a good day.